So the somewhat famous genealogy of Jesus from the Gospel of Matthew. And if you open the New Testament, these are the first words of the New Testament. And I remember somebody saying, you know, the editor should have said, you should probably get a better opening, okay? You should probably get something a little more, grabs your attention a little better. But obviously, the editor of the New Testament is the Holy Spirit, you know, the author of the whole New Testament is, is the Holy Spirit. And the instrumental writer, in this case, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And so we, we hear that Jesus is the son of David and the son of Abraham. And Abraham was called. The way that salvation history unfolds is, you know, you have creation and then you have the fall, and then you have the chaos after the fall and the building of the Tower of Babel and these other elements and incidences and the flood. And God essentially starts over after Noah, but as soon as Noah is uh, out of the ark, he falls back into sin, almost recapitulating exactly the sin of Adam and Eve. Uh, but uh, but nonetheless, God then decides, if you will, decides the unfolding of history is that after the first 11 chapters, or the first um, 10 chapters into the 11th chapter, then we have the call of Abraham. And Abraham is the beginning of salvation history, if you will, as we kind of trace it in its in its, in the sense that the children of Abraham, even today, trace their lineage back to Abraham. And so Abraham is the father of David and the father of Jesus. And so our Lord's genealogy by Matthew traced back to Abraham. And now we get into the Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Jacob, Judah. And those names I hope are somewhat familiar. Then we get off of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah uh, into names that are much less familiar to us. And one of the first names is Tamar. And who was Tamar? Tamar was a woman of ill repute. Okay, and this is, again, something that's been pointed out to us before, just pointed out to you all before, Tamar, and then not only is Tamar mentioned as one of the women, and, and it's not unheard of for genealogies to include the female side, but at the same time, it's kind of unusual. And then particularly that the author of this genealogy, the Holy Spirit, would from time to time throw in a woman's name and these women are, generally speaking, Gentiles and not virtuous. And so, what's the deal with that? It doesn't have anything to do with putting them down because they're women. It has to do with put it. It has to do with this this realness of Jesus's genealogy how he's rooted in humanity, both Gentile, saintly, and sinner. And so our Lord comes and these names, Tamar and, and uh, Rahab and Ruth. And when we get down to David became the father of Solomon, doesn't even name the mother. Who's the mother of Solomon? Bathsheba. And how did that happen? Well, that happened. It wasn't actually a rape necessarily. David didn't rape Bathsheba, but David used his power as king to seduce, 
Bathsheba and, and essentially, you know, go say, go get her and bring her to me and bring her to my palace. And so we have this, we have these names, Tamar and uh, Rahab, who was a harlot, and Ruth, who was a virtuous woman, and then the mother of Uriah, the wife of Uriah, whose mother, the mother of Solomon. And again, why am I going on and on? Well, we read these names and some of you may just roll your eyes and think, what's the big deal? They're all significant. This is, this is important. And maybe it's not as exciting as some other story that we might write or read, but to understand what's happening under the surface of what seems to be just kind of a archaic, superficial sort of, man, why didn't they just X that out? Give us the short form, Father Mike. Don't read all the names, okay? But, but we need to read these names and we need to recognize that it's men and women who strove to live their life and their faith well, and it's men and women who fell and Jesus comes as the Redeemer. Jesus comes as a member of the human family. I heard it described again this way, as Adam's family, right? And what do you think of when you think of Adam's family? You think of the kooky, uh, you think of the kooky, uh, uh, you know, uh, crazy, uh, you know, uh, 70s show or 60s show, the Adam's family, right? Well, Adam's family is filled with ghouls and, and I hate to say demons, but Adam's family, it's our family. It's our family. And guess who became a member of our family? Our savior came to adopt us if you will, out of Adam's family into Jesus's family, the new Adam. So maybe more than you wanted to hear about some of these names, but the names are important. They paint a picture of human history. They paint a picture of our history. And Jesus comes to save the men and the women, not the righteous, but the sinners. And so uh, today we claim our place in Adam's family and Jesus is the new Adam that comes to heal and transform us.